Hello, my name is Brian Powell. I am entering the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness via the Bear Canyon Trail. We are in a very lush stand of mature chaparral on a north-facing slope. My destination is Sitton Peak, and this is the beginning of the hike. I just got through the trailhead, and I'm here looking at some wonderful specimens of chaparral shrubs. We have our California scrub oak, Quercus berbertifolia. We have our beautiful hoary leaf Ceanothus, Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius, in bloom since this is early March. We have a wonderful specimen of sugar sumac, Russo vata, with its flower buds. And we also have, to my surprise, San Diego mountain mahogany, Circa carpus minuta floris. Didn't expect to see this one. I expected to see this one a little further south. We are in southwestern Riverside County. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I did expect to see Circa Carpus Betuloides variety Betuloides, which is the birch leaf Circa Carpus. This is the trail as I am starting to ascend the Bear Canyon Trail towards Sitton Peak. My next turn will be right on the Tanaha Truck Trail, and then I will take a right, very hard right at four corners, on the Sitton Peak Truck Trail, and then I will ascend the steep use trail to the summit of the peak. Mixed in with the chaparral, we also have a little little young coast live oak, Quercus agrifolia, variety agrifolia. We also have wild cucumber in bloom, Mara macrocarpus. And we got our black sage, Salvia mellifera. We also have more Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius. 15 foot shrubs in full bloom. I don't think I could have picked a better day to hike this. Temperatures are in the upper 50s, scheduled to get up to the low 60s today before a heat wave sets in this week. And look at all the boulders, very, very commonplace here in the southern Santa Ana mountain range. I will check in with more updates as I go along my hike. Thank you for watching. Here I am still on the Bear Canyon Trail, still just barely above the candy store over there in the center. Keep finding these wonderful shrubs that I feel the need to explore and discuss. Here's one of the most common chaparral shrubs called the common chamise, Adenostoma fasciculatum, variety fasciculatum. And this looks like Ceanothus crassifolius variety planus, the flat leaf variety. This is, I believe, my first time seeing this one. The difference between this one and variety crassifolius is that the leaves are not revolute, aka curled under. So I believe this is a variety planus. Another nice pleasant surprise on just what's been three minutes into my hike. Just loving this beautiful trail. There's my destination in the center of the shot, that is Sitton Peak. The other peak next to it looks a little bit higher because it's in front. But that one with the steep drop off on the right, that is Sitton Peak, not the one with that little boulder outcropping on top. This is going to be a very good adventure. I can feel it already. I've barely started this hike and I'm already beyond ecstatic. Of course, here we go. Eastwood Manzanita, Arctostaphylos glandulosa, subspecies glandulosa. Very abundant in the Santa Ana Mountains. Hiking-wise, this is probably one of my favorite mountain ranges, considering all the variety and trails with all skill levels. Just two days ago, I went up Silverado Canyon, all the way up to Pleasant and Agador Peak, which was nearly an 18-mile trip. This one is going to be closer to 10, so away I go. I will check in more with more details later. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I am now entering the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness. This is Brian Powell again, signing in. I've hiked through some very lovely Ceanothus crassifolia chaparral, and now I'm heading into an oak woodland to round out the experience. 
I have to cross this little brook here and then I shall be able to continue on the trail hopefully with not overly wet feet look at this beautiful coast live oak woodland here this is Brian signing out I will see you on the peak This is Brian again. I am now on my way to Four Corners, which is about two miles away, and I've come across a birch leaf circocarpus. Circocarpus betuloides, variety betuloides. So, this trail has two of our common circocarpus species. Minuta floris, more common in San Diego County, and Betuloides, variety Betuloides, common throughout. Here are some more Ceanothus crassifolius blossoms. Enjoy. And I will check in with you later at Four Corners. Hello again, this is Brian. I'm at another trail junction. This is where you're going to want to go when you get to this oak woodland here at the bottom of this little ravine. You're going to follow this 1.1 miles to Four Corners. Enjoy a quick little rest stop here. Enjoy the beautiful coast live oak woodland and these beautiful trees and shrubs. Beautiful white sage, sagebrush. The fresh smells here are intoxicating. 1.1 miles, we will reach Four Corners, and at Four Corners we'll take a very hard right, and that'll take us to the Sit and Peak Truck Trail. See you at Four Corners. Well, I'm still on the same trail. I haven't quite reached Four Corners. And I'm finding a middle of the trail creek running along it. Very interesting, to say the least. Very muddy after recent rains. This rainy season has definitely been super, superlative, at least in comparison and contrast to previous years. So, should be getting close to four corners, but the going is a little slow occasionally because of the constant creek here. Nice to see water though. See you later.
Hello, this is Brian again. I have finally made it to Four Corners. This is a major trail junction if you are trying to reach various parts of the southern Santa Ana Mountains. You have two different ways to get back to Ortega Highway. Bear Ridge Trail is about 3.6 miles to a different stretch of Ortega Highway. The Bear Canyon Trail takes you to the candy store on Ortega Highway. I am now getting ready to head up to Sit and Peak. Here's the marker. This is the Sit and Peak Trail. This does not actually lead to the summit of the peak. It leads around the mountain. So after a certain point, I'm going to have to look for a use trail that will actually take me to the summit. Four Corners is an area where you can catch a break, relax, or other people want to go explore further down in the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness. I'm sure there are extra trails that will take you into the spot. But since I'm here, I found a very beautiful specimen of white sage, Salvia apiana. It looks like it is very old. When you see a black sage this big, with inflorescent stalks that tall, you know this one's been around for a long time. Because these plants start out very herbaceous, and then they become semi-woody, and then with age, it's kind of hard to see from here, they do develop a woody trunk with furrowed brownish grayish white bark. This is white sage, Salvia apiana, with one of the most unique scents of the sages. Very clean smelling, very lovely, noble shrub. In a very wonderful place, the Santa Ana Mountains. There again is Sitton Peak. I have about just under two miles before I reach that. Um, this is probably going to lead to the most strenuous part of the hike. Soon after going up the road, or the trail, when I get to that use trail, I heard that the grade is quite steep, around 30 degrees. But hiking's what I do. May as well just do it. I'll see you at the next trail junction. Enjoy the beautiful chaparral, the north-facing slopes of Sitton Peak. See you soon. It's me, Brian, again. This must be the trail number 7S09. This is the Sitton Peak Trail. I am now just under a mile left before I summit it. From this point, I'm guessing, and don't quote me on that because I've never been up there before, that might be it there. So, let me see and find out. See you at the use trail. Enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Chaparral. Hoary, hoary leaf Ceanothus, Ceanothus crassifolius, Verde crassifolius in full March glory. About a month or two, some of these yuccas will be sending up rosettes. This is Chaparral yucca, Hesperow yucca, Whippley.
Hello again, this is Brian. I've made it to the junction of the Sit and Peak Trail and the Use Trail that scrambles up the steep slope to the summit. Here's a little marker. Not as hard to find as I thought. Hearing from other people saying it's very easy to miss it. But I could see it from the other side of the canyon when I was coming around that slope right there. I could actually see the use trail from that area, so I knew where I would be looking to find it. Here I go. This is the toughest part of the hike from what I've read and heard. Since this is my first time, I'll be able to decide for myself. Well, here I go. Last, last haul to sit and peak. 3,273 feet through some beautiful chaparral. Yeah, buddy! Hello, this is Brian again. I'm hiking up the Sit and Peak Use Trail. I keep saying, oh, I'll see you at the peak, or I'll see you at this place, and I always end up saying something else in between, cutting myself off. But this part of the trail is pretty steep. For the most part, if you have sturdy feet, you should be fine. So you can see it goes down pretty steeply. There are some areas where this little rut in the trail goes deep down and it might be helpful in some spots for some trekking poles, whether or not you really are stable on your feet. But enjoy the scenery, enjoy a nice little cardio workout, enjoy the first sugar sumac, Rus ovata, I have seen in bloom so far today. And as I'm telling you this and rambling on about the trail and these plants, you really should get up here and hike. Get up here and hike. Enjoy these mountains. Enjoy the smell of this black sage, Salvia mellifera. Enjoy the dark green chemise, Adenostoma fasciculatum, variety fasciculatum. And I'm seeing the start of flower buds in about a, probably about a month and a half to two months. The chemise should be blooming. And uh, Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius, will probably have seed capsules just about ready to explode. And that's what they do when they ripen. They pop open and the seeds disperse everywhere. And lie dormant in the soil to the next fire, scarifies the seed coat. And in the following winter rains, get the germination in progress. Now, this portion of the trail does steepen up a bit. Uh, again, heck, hiking poles would probably have been a better idea for me. I'm not perfect. I do sometimes come underprepared. But if you're careful, and take your time in this last stretch, probably only about a half a mile to go from here, you should be fine. Just take your time, put your feet on the path of least, least resistance, and enjoy strengthening your leg muscles and your heart muscle. I will see you soon, either on the peak or before the peak if I find something else interesting to talk about. See ya. Hello, this is Brian again. There is the trail I came from. I still have a little ways to go, but the views already are insane. Look at the 10,000 foot ridge from San Bernardino Peak to San Gregorio. Now we're looking over towards San Jacinto way off in the distance and then much closer up behind this closest ridge is another ridge that's the high point of the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness which is often called the Elsinore Mountains High Point. The Elsinore Mountains being a sub-range of the Santa Anas. Hear me talking slow, I'm catching my breath. It's pretty steep up here. 
Um, might be hard to see, but in the center, there's a peak with radio towers, which is Elsinore Peak. Elsinore Peak is just a little bit lower than the high point of the Elsinore Mountains, which is unofficially named San Mateo Peak. And I've yet to hike up it, but there's supposed to be a wooden sign that says San Mateo Peak. That's one peak I still need to get up. To get to Elsinore Peak, the small peak with the radio towers off in the center, you're going to drive down on South Main Divide Road when it crosses Ortega Highway. You're going to turn, if you're coming in from OC, you're going to turn right on South Main Divide Road and you're going to follow it past a small community and then uh, there's going to be a dirt road pullout with a gate, usually locked. You just park your car at the turnout and you do a quick half mile hike up Elsinore Peak. It's one of the easiest peaks I've summited here in the Santa Anas. And like I said, the Elsinore Mountains are a part of the larger parent mountain range, which is the Santa Ana Mountains. Hopefully next time I talk to you, will be right on the summit of Sitton Peak. Stay tuned. Enjoy the views. Hello, this is Brian again. I have finally made it to the summit of Sitton Peak. Here are all the boulders that you scramble at the very top. We are now looking down towards Ortega Highway in San Juan Canyon. We are also looking out towards Santiago Peak at 5,687 feet. And it's kind of hard to make out, but the boulder studded mountains in the middle background are Old Sugarloaf Peak at about 3,300 something. And the one to the right of it, with the boulder, the larger boulder outcrop on the top, is the uh, newer Sugarloaf, which is about 3,200 something feet. Feels good to finally summit. Not a very strenuous hike. Moderate, moderate, especially for the last uphill climb when you're coming up to the peak. And you get some very expansive views towards Orange County as well. And if it weren't so hazy, you'd be able to see Cuyamaca a lot more clearly, which is off to the center. It's kind of hard to see because it's a little hazier today. And then there's Palomar Mountains Ridge with the summit bump at 6,140 feet, one of the hikes I did last month. And it's kind of hard to see here, but you can even see Toro Peak at 8,700-something feet. And uh, might even be able to make out the ramparts of nearby Santa Rosa Mountain, which just barely crests at 8,070 feet, just about a mile or two away from Toro Peak Summit. Here's the remainder of the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness. I hope you guys enjoy these views like I am. It's a lot better when you're here physically. And uh, on my way back, I will update you with some more interesting facts and finds that I find along the trail back that I didn't see the first time. Enjoy. One more little thing before I head down. Here is one of the survey markers for Sit and Peak. I did see another one, but to my disappointment I did not see the brown summit sign that I see on most other Santa Ana mountain peaks. So, somebody probably stole it or vandalized it, which to me is really aggravating, because I'd like to get a picture of the sign, and I think it's a nice thing to do to uh, show the hikers a nice reward for all the effort taken summiting. I will see you on the trail down. This is Brian signing off. One last parting shot at Palomar Mountain.
this is Brian again. I also noticed two other peak markers for sit and peak. There was one that was old and gray, or kind of well, old and gray. There was one that was, looked like it was a little bit newer, and there was one that looked oxidized, kind of like the turquoiseish color, like the Statue of Liberty. Um, I didn't shoot a picture of those or shoot a video with those because there were some other people on the summit and I wanted to respect their privacy but uh, what a great hike this is one of the most beautiful hikes in the Santa Ana mountains and I say that just about every time I hike in the Santa Ana's but what an incredibly beautiful hike yes just like uh, other people who have blogged and made videos about this hike the views are great the trails are beautiful. The only really tough part of the climb is the use trail, which you saw a little marking for that just said sit and peak with no mileage number on it. It was probably about a half, an, half a mile, three quarters of a mile scramble anyways. But you get a great payoff for not a, an exorbitant amount of effort. But do be aware when you're hiking back down Con in contradiction to downhill to the parking lot, you are going to get a few uphill stretches on the way back because there were a few downhill stretches on the way in. So just be aware of that when you're hiking back. Um, just make sure you have enough water. I brought 10 of these arrowheads, 10 arrowhead bottles, and I've gone through about three of them on the way up. I had a bottle at the summit. Um, I mean, the temperature today is probably in the, I would say, maybe upper 50s still. Nice and cool up here, very cool breeze. There is a very big warm spell coming in for the second half of this week, so cooler weather like this is highly recommended for hiking these peaks because this is a relatively low elevation peak. Um, very much worth the effort look at those views of course this isn't the actual summit I've down came down from the summit for a little while and I will see you later after I wipe the sunscreen out of my eyes enjoy me Brian again. I haven't really made any progress down the hill yet because I keep finding interesting stuff to show other people who are interested in hiking this or who are interested in plant and wildlife. Well here we have a chemise, a Denostuma fasciculatum, variety fasciculatum, very common sight. But now we get to look down, look at these plants with some green leaves and in some reddish purplish bracts. That is warrior's plume, a relative of the paintbrush. The paintbrush is in there in the, in the broom rape family or a bancaceae. This plant I believe is a hemiparasite, not a full parasite since it does have green to manufacture its own food via photosynthesis but see how they're growing close to the trunks of the chemise and the eastwood manzanita? This is because they attach to the roots and are at least partially parasitic on some of the nutrients that these shrubs take up. Just figured that would be an interesting fact to point out. I've seen a few here and there. I actually saw a couple on the use trail to Pleasant's Peak the other day took a photo but it came out really cloudy but here is the most level and gentle part of the use trail to and from Sitton Peak which for the sake of climbing is actually probably less climatic than most of the way up the use trail 
because it actually levels off almost completely flat before you summit. But now, here I go, beginning my descent, and that level part is a thing of the past. Here comes the steep descent, and then once I get back at the bottom of the use trail, I start a fairly lengthy ascent up the road towards four corners. Now I just gotta make sure I watch my step. Coming down this might be actually harder than going up. Going up requires more energy. See what I mean? <laughs> I almost met, almost messed myself up here. Like again, trekking poles would have helped. But I'll see you down the trail. This is Brian again. Still descending the use trail to sit and peek. I've had a couple of little slips. Very, very tense moments where the footing is not very good. And there we have a western fence lizard. Scaloporus occidentalis longipes. Just chilling on the rock, getting a little sun, not really caring about my presence. Like I said, trekking poles, hiking poles, are a very wise idea on this trail because it's very slippery, even more so on the way down. I think I might actually be going a little slower. Usually you go up more slowly and you come down more quickly. But when it's steep like this, you don't want to chance it and go too fast and gain too much momentum. And that's the same for just about any any hike, especially in the downhill section. A little bit easier on the breathing and the chest. A little more ten a little tenser on the feet and lower leg muscles. But all in all, this hike is a wonderful excursion into a federally protected wilderness area. Again, what goes down must come up for a little while. So I'm going to have a nice little incline on the way back to Four Corners. And uh, after Four Corners, you will get some minor uphill stretches on the way back. So just be aware of that. And uh, if it gets kind of steep for your liking, just do what I do. Pace yourself. And don't overdo it, or you'll tire yourself out very quickly. I will see you again at some other point along the trail. Probably by this time, back at the regular sitting trail. Enjoy. Hello, this is Brian again. I've made it down the use trail from Sitton Peak. And now... I'm going to be heading back on the Sit and Peak Truck Trail, which looks a lot more like a regular trail than a truck trail, probably because it isn't being used anymore. If you were to continue and turn right when you're coming back down the mountain, you could take the Lucas Canyon Trail and end up at by Ortega Highway, uh, eight, almost eight and a half miles away. That's if you desire to explore the area more, or, like me, time to head from there, back around the bend, and back to Four Corners. Alright, now thus begins the descent, then the next ascent up to the lovely Four Corners to see my old, my new friend, that huge white sage, and then grab a little 
grab a glass of water or <laughs> a bottle of water, chug it up, and make my way back. I will see you at another point of the trail with more updates, more findings, and more chaparral beauty. Hello, this is Brian again. I've made it most of the way up towards the saddle. We're on the way to Sitton Peak. You lose a substantial amount of elevation. One little note is when you get to this point when you're going into your hike, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, you're going to see a small trail here on your left. Not the trail you want to take if you're trying to go to Sitton Peak because it goes to I don't know where to be honest with you. Just remember when you're hiking to Sitton Peak, your use trail is going to be marked and it's going to be on the right side. Beautiful day. Temperatures down here maybe a couple degrees warmer than at the summit because this is a little, you know, a good few hundred feet lower. Now I am getting ready to approach four corners in just under a mile. This is the junction we saw before. So onward, and it looks like. Get a little payoff for that extra little incline on the way back. Looks like we might be going to a little downhill. Love it! Hello again, this is Brian. I have made it back to Four Corners, which is 1.7 miles from Sitton Peak. I still have about 3.2 more to go. According to this sign right here, exactly posted here. 3.2. Once again, this is Four Corners. This is one of the major junctions. So when you get back from the Sitton Peak Trail, right here, you're going to go and make a hard left and come back towards me, right here. So, start heading back that way. See you later on the trail. Hello, here's Brian again. I am now 1.1 miles past Four Corners. I came up to this sign for the Bear Canyon Trail. It says 1.1 miles to Four Corners. And I see this other trail junction right here. Found out something very interesting. This is the same trail that meets at Four Corners. It's called the Bear Ridge Trail. Never heard of this one before. But apparently, this one's almost a half mile longer, but it will take you to Four Corners. And it'll wind you back. Just interesting to see. I don't know exactly where it goes. If it goes up the ridges on the other side and then comes back down, I don't know. But seeing that was pretty interesting because it's had a sense of deja vu. Could have sworn I saw a Bear Ridge before, and here's a Bear Ridge Trail. Just a little bit longer to Four Corners. From here, I have about 2.1 miles left up this way, back to the trailhead. 
and the candy store. So I will see you with further updates or interesting finds as I enjoy another round of scenery. Hello, this is Brian again. I am most of the way back. I am now 3.9 miles away from Sitton Peak. So I only have about a mile, let's say about a mile left to go. And here, ladies and gentlemen, the Morgan Trail. And you can go to South Main Divide Road, the paved portion of it. And you can intersect it north of uh, Elsinore Peak. This is the last mile, the last stretch for me, so here for me again at the trailhead, unless I catch something along the way that I feel compelled to talk about. Enjoy! This is Brian again. I'm on my last stretch of the trail. Last stretch, maybe just a little bit under a mile. Hiking through the Ceanothus forest. Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius. This is where I came before, and I've just left the San Mateo Canyon wilderness. So this is the last stretch before Ortega Highway. These Ceanothus crassifolius shrubs are very large more like small trees and shrubs. Very beautiful. And you have a few nice scrub oaks, Quercus berbertifolia. So, this is the last portion of the descent back to the trailhead. I will be back at my car very soon, probably within a half an hour because I can hear the highway and it sounds really close. I will see you at the trailhead. Stay tuned. Well, folks, this is Brian again. I'm approaching my last 10, 10 minutes of hiking. That right there on the north side of Ortega Highway is the hiking lot. I guess the trail lot. A lot of spaces for the San Juan Loop Trail and, of course, across the street here, the good old Bear Canyon Trail. Try to hard to see, but on the right side is the candy store again. I am making my last five, ten minutes of my hike, and that'll be it. As usual, it's a pleasure being on the trail, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you one last time at the trailhead sign. Hello, this is Brian Powell. This is the San Mateo Canyon Wilderness Bear Canyon Trail. These are some regulations. Some precautions. And some more precautions. There's an oak. Which luckily I didn't run into too much of that. We are right behind the candy store of Ortega Highway. Before you continue on about 60 feet away, there's a little box for you to sign in. You must sign in. It is a requirement. So the forest can keep track of how many visitors use this area. 
if the place is overused, they could switch to a quota system, like a lot of the other ones, like the San Gorgonia Wilderness. Just stay on the trail. You can hear the din of the Ortega Highway traffic because we are right behind the candy store. Sit and peek is that in the center of the frame. That's it. That's about 4.9 miles from here. On trail, that is. Straight ahead is probably closer to 3, but the trail will wind around. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is the Santa Ana Mountains, a peninsular mountain range in separating Orange and Riverside County. We are technically on the Riverside County side. And one of my favorite mountain ranges to hike. I hope you enjoy this. See you on the trail. Hello, this is Brian again. I am just about at the candy store. This is basically the end of my hike. I hope you guys enjoy this adventure. I know I did. I had a lot more of it because I was actually here. Hopefully you guys take the trip up Ortega to this trailhead. Bear Canyon Trailhead, Cleveland National Forest. We are coming up on the candy store. A little slippery when you begin. Here's the candy store. And the trailhead parking is right on that side. Enjoy! Hello, my name is Brian Powell. I am by the candy store, which is right next to the Bear Canyon Trailhead. Here's a candy store. 